Okay, so let's take a look at how to graph uh, these two equations where the equations aren't exactly in a point slope or a slope intercept form. So in question number C, we have 3y plus 5x is less than 6. So what we should do with this question is put it into the form um, the y equals mx plus b format. So what we need to do is we need to move the 5x over. So we will subtract 5x from both sides. Then we'll put negative 5x on the right side plus 6. And then let's divide by 3 across each term so that we have y is less than or equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 6 divided by 3 is 2. From this we can get two things here. We know that our slope m is equal to negative 5 over 3. Okay, and remember this is rise over run. So we're actually going to go down 5 and over 3. And our intercept here is that b is equal to 2, which means our intercept here is 0, 2. So if we wanted to graph this line, what we could do is we plot our intercept, 0, 2, put a dot there. And then we can just find an extra, uh, another point with using our slope, which is negative 5 and over positive 3. So negative 5 down, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down to here, and then over 3, which we'll put a dot right there. So that would give us our line where we have um, uh, negative 5, 3 is the slope. Now this is y is less than, so that means we would put a dashed line in. So I'll just draw a partial line here, connecting the two dots together. And because we want to figure out where, whether we shade above or below, we can look at the form of the equation. Here it says y is less than negative 5 thirds. So because it's less than, that means we're going to indicate that we would shade below the, the existing line. Now, the way to do this, if you're not 100% sure, is that you can just bring a test point. Okay, and I usually like to use a test point of 0, 0 and then we can just see if that's true. So if we shaded it correctly, the test point zero, zero would make this equation true. So we put in zero for x, so that gets rid of the negative five-thirds, and then we have zero for y, and then our test would say zero is less than two. Okay, and then, so with our test point of zero comma zero, our equation becomes zero is less than two, and then is that a true or false statement? And that is actually true. So therefore we have shaded the correct side of the line in this case. Okay, and then if we went to the other equation here on the other side, we have the same thing. Um, I'm just gonna rewrite this so I have the y term on the right side, so it's gonna be four x minus seven y is greater than, um, whoops, I want to keep the same format here. 4x minus 7y is less than 14. Not greater. I'm just transposing the, the two terms. Okay, and then we're going to move the x over to the other side. So it's negative 7y is less than negative 4x plus 14. And divide both sides by negative 7. Now when you divide by negative 7, a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. So the less than becomes greater than. Okay, and this is going to be negative 4 over negative 7 x um, and then 14 divided by negative 7 is going to give us a negative 2. So this tells us here that our slope, so our slope here is 2 negative so it's going to cancel out so that's 4 over 7 and again that's rise over run and our intercept is at b is equal to negative 2. So I'll just use a different color here. So b at negative 2 is going to be down here and then our Rise over run is 4 and 7, so we're going to go up 4 from this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 7, which we'll put our dot right about here. Okay, and then again, it's a greater than a sign, so we're going to put a dashed line in. So we'll connect the two points with the dashed line. And where do we shade? Do we shade above the blue line or below the blue line? So again, it says y is greater than, so we can shade all the areas above the line. Okay, and remember, it's going to be overlapping now with the other one. And again, we could use our test point here, um, 0, 0, because that's supposed to be in the shaded area. So we'll look at 0, 0 here, and if I put in 0 for x, that will make negative 4, um, 4 sevenths times 0, that'll make that term go away. 
and then we're going to be left with 0 for y is greater than negative 2. And is that a true or false statement? So yes, that's true. Therefore, we've shaded on the right side of the line. So this would be the solution for, for those two if we were going to graph it manually. And the actual um, um, solution, though, to both of these um, equations is just the part where the shading overlaps. So I'll put that here in a different color. It's purple here, but where the, the red shaded area intersects the blue shaded area, okay, that is all going to be the common solution boundary for those two equations. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Um, the other way is once you get your equations um, uh, manipulated and, and put into y equals mx plus b form, Okay, you could use a graphing tool like Desmos to do work it out, or you could just put the actual equations that you see given in the, in the questions and you could use the Desmos graphing tool and you should see you'll still get the same answer for that. All right, so that's a one way to do question C. Um, question D, um, again, is uh, very similar. It is, except we're plotting four equations. Okay, and in a couple of these equations here, we don't actually have... Um, a y term. So if we look at the first one here, it says x is greater than negative 2. So we look to see where negative 2 is. You know, go back to red here. And that means negative 2 is on this side right here. But because y is not specified, that means we can use any value for y. So it's actually just going to be a straight line. And because it's greater than or equal to, okay, we want to put in a solid line. So I'll do this. Okay, and then we're shading everything greater than negative 2. So that's going to be all the areas to the right of that line. Okay, so that's how that one would go. If we do the next one, um, y is less than 3. So we need to find where 3 is on the y-axis. So I'll put a dot right here. And that implies that x can be any value. So it's going to be a straight line. But because it's just less than... It's going to be a dashed line. So we'll put a dashed line across like that. And anything less than 3. So again, we, we're shading below the line because we want to be less than 3. Okay, so it's going to be below the blue line here. And you can see that it's going to intersect at some value here with the red shaded area. Then the last one here, uh, we'll just go to a different color. We'll use uh, pink for this one. Um, I would put this into the same y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so we're going to have 3y less than, we're going to add x to both sides. We'll bring that over and it's plus 6. And then we have to divide by 3. So it's going to give us 1 third x plus 6 divided by 3, which is 2. So our slope, rise over run, is 1 over 3. And our intercept is at b equals 2. So we put in, we can mark our intercepted um, 0, 2. And then using our rise over run method, so 1 up and then over 3, we'll put us a point here. And again, we'll just put a second point here. So we go up 1 again and rise over 3. And there's our set of points that we can connect. And because it's less than, not equal to, it's going to also be a dashed line. So I can just put a dashed line that runs through these points and extend the line. And then again, where do we shade? Do we shade below or above? Well, it says y is less than 1 third x, so we are going to be shading below the region. Okay, and again, we're also looking to see where it intersects the other regions here. So we're starting to see that we have a, a cluster of points here where um, this is the one of the points here where it is a common area. And then like, we've got to do our last one here. So let's go to a different color here. We'll use green. Okay, and we're going to use the same equation here. So this is already sort of in y equals mx plus b form. I'll just write it out one more time here. We need to divide by negative 2. Okay, so when we divide by negative 2, we flip the sign. Okay, and this is going to give us 5 over negative 2x. And then this is going to be minus 4. So here in this case, our slope is 5 over negative 2 or negative 5 over 2. doesn't matter which way you look at it, but we one of the signs has to be negative. And then b is equal to negative 4. So we'll go to put our point here, negative 4. 
and then our rise over run method. So we go up five, one, two, three, four, five, and then over negative two. So our point's gonna be right there. Okay, and then we can do another point just for good measure. One, two, three, four, five, and then over negative two right there. So what we can do now is shade our line and because it's less than, it's going to be a dashed line also. So we'll just mark it in as a dashed line. It's not quite accurate there, but that connects to the points. And then we're shading below the line. So that means everything below is shaded here. Okay, so what we see is that there's this little triangle here. We'll put it in black, I guess. That is the common area which overlaps everything. All the shaded regions just overlap in this tiny little black area right here. And that would be the solution to that um, set of, of equations. And again, you could graph this in Desmos and check it to see if you want a little more accurate plot, but you'll, you should see that that's how those lines work. Okay, so this is a way that you can do both uh, C and D. Um, the, the trick here is that you want to make sure you put everything into the Y equals MX plus B form. Find your slope, find your intercepts, okay, and then um, draw your lines appropriately and then shade the, the regions that you're looking for. Okay, so hopefully that one helps you out.